So he's here hanging with us, but will you please give a warm welcome to my friend, Nathan Colt. That's good. Well, I'm, I'm really weird. One of the things I like about Rocky Road, I, I like making like milkshakes with Rocky Road, which people think is really weird because it's all chunky and stuff like that. But it's really great when you just put the Rocky Road in there, pour some milk, mix it up, and then at the bottom you've got a little surprise. It's cool. <laughs> Try it sometime. Surprise yourself. So, well, cool. It's, uh, it's good to see you guys. I kind of thought I might just be talking to a bunch of strangers that I didn't know before, but I actually see a few familiar faces. I think maybe some people that I've seen on a swim team somewhere. Anybody in here swim? Yeah, a few people, swimmers? Yeah, swimmers? So I know I've, I've seen some folks. Yeah, yeah, that's where you know me from. I see some folks that I've seen do some drama, some wonderful acting, I think. Right? Anybody in here an actor? Actress? Yeah, I've, I've, seen, I've seen some folks. So, so that's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, so today I want to talk a little bit, I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself, a little bit about me growing up, and some things I've learned along the way. Does anybody here have any idea what you want to be when you grow up? What you want to do with your life? Yeah, what, what do you want to be? What's that? Okay. How about you? What do you want to be? Train horses. Oh, that's exciting. You there in the beanie, what do you want to be? Uh, Got, oh, that's awesome. Red? Teacher. Teacher. All right, over here. Writer. Writer. How about you? Yeah. Special needs kids. That's awesome. An actress. Man, there's a, there's a lot of things. Is there anybody in here that feels like it might be a challenge to do what you want to do when you grow up? Yeah? <coughs> Yeah, why, why do you feel like it might be a challenge? Um, because I think it's really like winning or losing. It is? It, it's like winning or losing? How about you? You're going to be forced to do what I want to do again. Oh, yeah, I feel you there. How about you, sir? What's that? A lot of trial and error. A lot of trial and error. Get my ideas. Dude, it, yeah, I hear you. How about you? Yeah, yeah, it can be really hard. One more, how about you? Yeah, yeah, somebody doing better at the job, right? So I, I've definitely found in my life that there's a lot of things, so, sometimes there are things about myself that, that I, I know might uh, be an obstacle. I might, might call them a weakness, right? Something I'm not super good at. You talked about it can take a lot of work to, uh, to do what you want to do or become what you want to become or achieve what you want to achieve. And, and maybe you don't feel like working so much, maybe because you're tired or, or, or you've got other things you want to do, right? But, but we, all have, we all have things that we might call a weakness, right? Sometimes those obstacles are things outside of us, right? Sometimes they're, they're things in our life. They could be circumstances or situations at home, right? They, they could be things like there's other people who might be better at the job or we think are better at the job, right? It, it could be uh, something crazy like... Um, a virus that goes around and turns the world upside down, right? There's all kinds of obstacles or, or speed bumps that we encounter in life, and, and we can think those might keep us from, from doing what we think we want to do, or more importantly, what God's called us to do, right? What he wants for us in our life. And I heard a lot of amazing ideas that you guys have out there. Things like working with people, with teaching people, guidance counselor, uh, you know, being a horse trainer and working with people who want to ride horses and things like that, right? And th those are incredible, fantastic things to do because you have an opportunity to change people's lives. Well, when I was a kid, um, I was a little bit of, a, 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 I, I don't know if you'd say a wild kid, maybe a rowdy kid. Has anybody in here ever been a little bit of the rowdy or wild kid? Anybody at all? Everybody up front, few people in the back, right? <laughs> So, so when I was young, I, I was just, I was a really curious, energetic person, you know. Um, I wanted to do lots of things. My attention went lots of places. And, and when I was really young, that was pretty confusing for people around me, pretty frustrating for people around me sometimes. 
Do, do either any of you feel like sometimes you frustrate people around you? <laughs> yeah, me for sure. Still, it's, it, it didn't go well. Um, but uh, when, when I was young, I, I was diagnosed with something called ADHD. It's it's pretty it's pretty popular now. You know, every, like like basically, if you're a kid, they they, they diagnose you with that because you can get distracted. But but there are some people who are a little more affected than others. And at the point in time that I was diagnosed, it was not common. People didn't really know a lot about it. Um, so I was just uh, a, a distracted, distracting, um, challenging kid in many respects. And, um, you know, there were a lot of things that could be viewed as weaknesses about that. Things like I could be impulsive. I could just do something as soon as it came to mind without thinking about it, without thinking about the consequences or the effects. Any of you ever been impulsive? Yeah, sometimes. I, I could be really impatient, right? I just wanted things, like, it's the set, because again, when those things hit my, like, mine, I might not be thinking about them again in a minute. So, you know, my brain's going to be somewhere else, so I kind of wanted it then and, and now. Any of you ever feel impulsive? Yeah? I, I, I could get easily distracted by, by other things that were happening around me, and there's always a lot happening around me, right? Um, and, and so these things could be really challenging. Sometimes they could be challenging in relationships, Right? With other friends. You know, because if, if I'm just being distracted or distracting or, or uh, I, I can be argumentative, right? Because sometimes, like, I'm thinking about something and I'm hearing something somebody's saying or something somebody's doing, and I'm like, well, that's not right. Well, what about this? Well, what about that? Well, what about, like, right? And I ask all kinds of questions, and especially for, like, grown ups, teachers, and parents and stuff that I have to, have to work with, that can be really frustrating. At that, at that point in time, I didn't necessarily understand how it could be frustrating. Because it didn't frustrate me, right? I just had the questions. What frustrated me was people not wanting to, like, answer them. You know, it, it could be, it could be uh, frustrating and challenging for people because um, I, I, uh, I could challenge people a lot. Like, I, those questions and, and those, like, that they viewed it as questioning them. Like, like somehow my idea was, well, well, I'm challenging you as a person. I'm really just trying to understand something, right? Um... And I just thought differently than other people. Like the way I thought about things. A lot of times when I would go to a class or something, we'd be talking about some, some conversation, like there's a right answer, right? There's the right answer. And to me, there wasn't just a right answer, right? There were different ways of thinking about it, and different ways of getting there, different ways of solving the problem. And I always wanted to explore all of them. And, and that could be really challenging for, for people. It could be really frustrating for a teacher who's like, hey, you're trying to walk down the path. But there were reasons they were doing that, right? So somewhere along the way, I had to figure out how to take these weaknesses and turn them into strengths, right? Because there's a lot of times that those things that, that may be challenging for you, that may be challenging for the people around you, you can learn how to use those things to really help you, right? So, so that's one thing I want, to talk, I want to talk about a little bit today is, is turning those weaknesses into strengths. But another thing is to, we all encounter those road bumps, like the speed bumps in life, right? And what are you supposed to do when you come up to a speed bump? Stop, slow down. Slow down, yep. Why, why, why are you supposed to slow down when you come up to a speed bump? Because they might, like, the car might, like, they, they might, uh, might, like, hit your car of the, like, a jump. Like, yeah, yeah. Your car. Make your car jump. I'll, like and then that. it could flood, flood up your tires because well, it could pop your tires or fall off. <laughs> yeah, how about you? Um, they can leave a dent in your car because they hit too hard. Yep, it can damage your vehicle. <coughs> One more? Honestly, I just want to fly. Honestly, you just want to fly. Okay, so I want to talk about this. The speed bumps are there, and they're there for a reason, right? They're there because you need to slow down, or you need to be aware, or you need to think about what's happening. That's one of the things that was really challenging for me when I was a kid, and it's still challenging for me today, to want to wanna stop and slow down and think about things. But you know what? And I, I love some of these answers that I heard, right? Sometimes it'll make your car jump. You just wanna fly. <laughs> well, another thing I wanna touch on real quick today is turning speed bumps into ramps, right? Any, any, has, has, does anybody ride bike? Yes. Has anybody ever taken their bike off any sweet jumps? Sweet jumps on a bike, you? Yeah? 
Yeah, so, so when I was a kid, my, my, my brother here, my little brother Aaron, and I, one of our favorite things to do was ride bikes. And we would build some sweet jumps, right? We would take like some boards and like a, a center block or something and put them on there. So, sometimes they were a little, a little iffier than others, you know. Sometimes you'd hit it uh, and, and the board might break and you just hit the, uh, the, the center block and go over, right? But sometimes they worked out really good and you just got really nice sweet jumps. So, and that, that felt cool, right? Or, or you go to the, uh, the bike park and, and hit the ramps. So, what I, what I, another thing I want to challenge us in is that in life, as you encounter these speed bumps, maybe it's like your job, your, your work's gonna, your, your job's gonna take a lot of work, but you don't feel like working, right? Sometimes it may be you perceive that there are other people around you that are better at it than you. How do you take those obstacles and turn them into to, to, to jumps, to ramps? So that you can fly, because that's what we, I mean, it's fun, right? I mean, I, I gotta be honest, I, 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 hit, I, I speed up when I see a speed bump sometimes. Don't ever do that. <laughs> ever do that. But, but, but that's what we want to do in life when we see those things. Because, you know, for example, all those things, when, when I had ADHD, I could be impulsive, I could be impatient, I could be distracted, right? On the flip side, that meant I was curious, right? I, I really I wanted to know a lot of things. Right? And, and not everybody is as curious. Like, we just assume they are. We assume they ask the same questions or want to do the same things, but not everybody does. Some people are just a little more focused. Some people are, are, are a little more like, just kind of give me the answer, tell me how to get there. Right? I, I, I wanted to do things really quickly, right? Because I had a thousand things I wanted to do that day, different things I wanted to play with, toys I wanted to do, uh, radios I wanted to break apart to see how they work, whatever it was. So I had to do things really quick to learn, to, to, to be able to fit in all the things I did, right? Uh, I, I absorbed a lot of things around me. I mean, my attention was kind of everywhere, right? So that meant it was really hard to focus that energy sometimes, to, 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 to get uh, uh, focused on something. But it also meant that I was seeing a lot of things. And that, can, can anybody see how that might be an advantage? Yeah, so my, my wife can, can get really frustrated with me these days because because I have a lot of hobbies, a whole lot of hobbies. I, I, I work on computers, and, and, and for money, my job, my main job is, is in software development and, and technology and stuff, right? So, so that's what I do. So I, I like that stuff, but I like mountain biking, right? I like kayaking and canoeing. I like building furniture. I like turning wood on a lathe. Uh, I like doing 3D printing, and I like doing laser engraving, and I like uh, going hiking and, and just all sorts of things, right? I've got lots of, of hobbies, and that can, again, be a little frustrating for my wife as the house gets full and, and, and more full of things. And well, why do you need that? Don't you already have a drill? Don't you already have a hammer? Yeah, but it's a different drill. It's a different hammer. It works different. What's up, man? No, I said my name is Nathan, but but close. It, it's spelled with, with uh, letters, so you're, you're close. <laughs> so, so yeah, so, so a lot of those things that were challenging for, for me as a kid, the, the, the fact that I thought differently, the fact that I, I, I call it kind of maybe like 360 degree like thinking or looking, like I'm, I'm not just here, I'm, I'm coming at things from a lot of different angles. It's really helped me as I grow up, especially as a software developer and things like that. You can see all kinds of angles from a problem where other people are just like kind of looking at it head on and taking it at, at face value. I want to jump around from the side. I want to go from the macro view, the big view, down to the micro, to the really small view, and flip back and forth constantly. And that can be a, a real benefit. For things like with the speed bumps in life, take, take, take you thinking somebody might be better at something than you. So first off, they might be better at something than you. And that's okay. Like there are gonna be people who are better and there are people who, who are, are not gonna be as good at something. That's fine. There's a few things you can do that with that. One, that's motivation, right? That's motivation to, to, to get better. Why are they better at, at it? Like, what, what is it that they're doing that's better? Learn from them. Take that advantage. If you see something, there's a reason maybe you think they're better at it, and I keep using this term, think they're better, right? But, but we look and we see the things, the aspects of that that they're better at than us, but we don't necessarily see the things that maybe we're doing better. So the key is, we'll, we'll, we'll figure out what your strengths are. 
Build on those and figure out what your weaknesses are, what they might be better at, and learn from that and, and incorporate that. But use that to motivate you to get better at something. If you have a hard time wanting to work, wanting to focus, right? Figure out why, like, like what is it that you want to do and how can you use that thing you want to do to help you get better at what you're doing, you know? Like um, for me, I did not like just going to class and just sitting through a lesson and listening to a lecture and, and just hearing exactly what I'm supposed to hear and doing exactly what I'm gonna do. But what, what I'm supposed to do, but I loved like going home and tearing apart a stereo and figuring out how it worked, right? Like, like how do the speakers work? How does sound come out of this thing? Like, how, how does a, a tape player work? I mean, you guys, anybody ever heard of a tape player? <laughs> yeah, that's because it's cool. Um, but but I, I like doing that. I like being hands on, taking things apart, figuring things out, right? So, so I, I figured out, well, look, I can learn the same things, I just learn them a little bit differently, and that was okay. And especially as you grow up, you'll find you have a little more autonomy and a little more autonomy, which means you're able to kind of make some decisions for yourself about how you do it, and you'll learn how, how to maximize that. But, uh, so, so figure out how to use those weaknesses and strengths. The other thing is, is these speed bumps, right? Those, those, those distracting things. And again, same thing, it can be those people that you think are better at something than you. They're probably thinking the same thing about you, just to be honest, right? <laughs> like they're, they're, They've got the same kind of anxieties and nervousness. Well, well she's so good at that. She, she loves doing that. She's a good worker. She's, you know, she's so smart, whatever. And, and they're thinking the same thing about you. Like they're, they're nervous just like you are. They're trying to figure out just like you are. But, but use those as a ramp. Don't come up to that person you think's better and look at that as a reason to stop. Right? Don't look at it as a reason to stop. Look at it as a, as, as a reason to just work all the more. To show what you can do. To, to, to let people see your strengths. Whether it's the way you think about things. Whether it's the fact that you, you think about a lot of things. Whether it's the fact that you focus. That you're really focused. For some people it's the other way, right? For me, my weakness was that I was distracted, but I could turn that into a strength. For you, your weakness might be that you've got blinders on. And you just see it. But at the same time, the strength is you're focused, right? So, and, and, and that's okay, they don't have to be the same. For, for me, I had, I, I've had all kinds of challenges. I, I had some challenges with my dad when I was a kid. We didn't always see eye to eye. Sometimes we could get frustrated with each other. He could get frustrated with me. But through doing that, I learned how to become independent. I learned how, how to, to um, have conversations too with him, right? Because sometimes to work through those issues and we don't see eye to eye, you've got to figure out how do we talk about that? Like, how do I even express what I'm thinking? How do I hear what he's thinking? How do I do it in a way that is productive and constructive and not just frustrating and destructive? And that's become really, really handy as I've grown up, as I've, as I've been an engineer and I've had to solve problems and I've had to work with other people. Guess what? When you're solving a problem, very rarely do every, does everybody see it the same way. Right? So you have to learn how to talk through that, how to work through that. And, and people, frankly, can just get frustrated with each other about it sometimes. I've had situations where right after my first daughter was born, I lost my job. Now, how many of you guys have jobs right now? How many of you have been married for a few years? <laughs> yeah, not, not so much, right? But, but, but how many of you have ever, like, kind of started down a path? Maybe it's been a sport. You've been doing a sport or something like that. And, and it kind of goes away, like, like you're not able to do it anymore for some reason. And that can be discouraging, and that can be frustrating, right? And that's, that's how it is, like when I, when I lose a job, I think I'm, I'm doing something, and I'm going somewhere, and, and then I lose my job, and I've got a wife, and I've got a daughter, and like, what am I gonna do? Yes, ma'am? especially if you're an athlete and you get injured, that can be really disruptive. But you know what? For me, after coming, coming out of that, I, I decided, well, I'm gonna, go to, I'm gonna go to college and I'm gonna try and get a degree to be an engineer. Just for the record, I ended up not finishing in college because I got another job that, that was way better and, and I had people in my life that were able to say, hey, you wanna do this? And I was able to pursue it and, and do really well. 
right? So there, there's different paths. But, but at any rate, I was able to use that opportunity when I lost that job to do something different, to kind of change course, and, and it ultimately ended up a lot better than the direction I was going before that. So, so again, we, we want to make sure we're using, we're seeing our weaknesses, we recognize them, but how do we find strength in that, right? And, and when we see those speed bumps, how do we use that to just catch some air, to, to fly, right? To use those to, to move us higher instead of to just stop us, because that's not what we want to do. And it's interesting because this is the way God works, right? God specifically uses our weaknesses to show strength over and over and over again. And I can say that in my life. All of the things, literally, almost all of the things that have helped me be successful in life were things that other people or I saw as weaknesses at some point in time. Literally, almost all of them. All of those things that have helped propel me forward in life have, have been things that could have been excuses to stop. They could have been reasons to, to go the other way. But I, I've got a couple Bible verses, not a lot. But in, in 2 Corinthians 12, 9, it says, But he said to me, and this is God, says to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weakness, so that Christ's power may rest on me. There's nothing wrong with feeling like you have weaknesses, right? God will, he can, and he will use that to show great power. In, in, in uh, 1 Corinthians 27, it says, But God chose, and this is specifically talking about how Jesus came and, and who Jesus was and how Jesus died on the cross and things like that. But it says, But God chose what the world <laughs> considers nonsense in order to shame the wise. Do you ever feel like what you're thinking or what's happening in your life might seem like nonsense to other people? Anybody? I do. Sometimes it feels like nonsense to me. Right? He used what, what was nonsense in order to shame the wise. He chose what the world considers weak in order to shame the strong. Right? Because sometimes people who think they're really strong and think they've got it, when they see somebody come along that's maybe a little weaker in an area, excel, can be really confusing right? They're like, but that's not how it's supposed to work. But that's how God works. God shows what the world looks down on as common or regards as nothing in order to bring to nothing what the world considers important. It's a lot of words there, right? But it's basically saying that God used these things that the world didn't think were powerful or didn't think were important to show them how what they did think was powerful and important was. Right? And he did that so that no one can boast before God. What does that mean? No one should boast. No one can boast before God. No one's better than God? That's for sure. Yeah. Well, I heard somebody talking over here. Somebody start saying something? Well, no, Jesus is the Son of God. He's part of the Trinity. They are one and the same. Yeah. But, but here's the thing, that none of us should boast. That means we need to have humility, right? So whether we, 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 we recognize our, our weaknesses, which is a good opportunity to build our, our humility, or whether we're thinking really good about ourselves, we need to remember that we ought to be humble. Because whether we're feeling weak in the moment or whether we're feeling strong in the moment, at the end of the day, God's got it under control. You know, we heard earlier from uh, Ms. Grun about how God is everywhere, all the time. He's always present, right? He's in control. Whether you're feeling weak, whether you're feeling strong, he's in control. He's there with you. So you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to worry about if you think somebody's better than you. You don't have to worry about if you think the job opportunities are going to be slim. You don't have to worry about that. You just have to trust that God's going to get you where he needs you and that he's going to be with you through it all. All right? So just remember, I want you to think about it. Whenever you come up to, to a speed bump, to a challenge in your life, what are you going to do? Make a right. right. Yeah. Whenever you're feeling weak about something, what are you going to do? Make a ramp, too. Okay, just make a ramp in general. <laughs> yep, that's, that's good. 
But no, just figure out how can this be a strength? Like, like how can I use this to do something good? Right? Because when we get stuck in feeling weak about things, we, we do silly things. Right? We just do silly things that we ought not do. So, so figure out how can I use that? How is this a strength? And think about that. But that's really all I have. Thank you guys for being patient. Thank you guys for listening. And thank you, Ms. Paul, for having me. I'll hand it over to you.